This week on QDL, over the years, automotive systems have become to rely more and more on software. Your car is essentially run by a computer, right? So what impact has that had on automotive design, automotive safety, and the quality management systems that automakers and suppliers use? Well, find out more when we come back. Welcome back to QDL. QDL is your weekly look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. And as I said in the run-up here, all major automotive systems are controlled of by uh, by a computer. All new automotive systems are controlled by a computer. A computer. During the, the last 10 years or so, a significant number of new technologies have been introduced into automobiles, which are largely software dr uh, driven, and this includes things like autonomous braking, uh, auto lane change, adaptive cruise control, uh, vision systems, and various sensor operated alerts. Now, according to our next guest, more than 50% of a new car's value, 50% will be found in its electronics and software. So add to this information the, uh, the move toward all electric or hybrid vehicles and autonomous vehicles, and you can see that the auto industry and its supply chain are faced with huge technology shifts that they have to adapt to. So here to talk to us about how the auto industry is adapting is Chad Keimel, CTO of Omnex Incorporated. Hi, Chad. Hi, Dirk. How are you? Oh, pretty good. <clears throat> so, um, in your article, which was really interesting, uh, I recommend everybody read Chad's article on this topic. It's uh, in the link underneath the player page down there. Uh, in your article, you mention that there have been uh, drastic changes that have been occurring in automotive development. And uh, in particular, you write, uh, you write, the three parallel developments of increased electronics and software in automobiles, increased software failures, and automotive product shift from combustion engines to electrics and autonomous have required new standards and methodologies in automobile vehicle and parts design as well as in manufacturing. So briefly, what standards and methodologies are you referring to here? Great, and uh, Dirk, one thing I'd like to mention is that it's hardware and software that's, you know, going to be over 50% of the content of a, of a vehicle. Dramatic change. It's about 33% now. It's going to go to 50%. And that's an incredible amount of value. In fact, much of it might end up going to Silicon Valley. And that's why there's a number of startups in Silicon Valley. Uh, you know, if you look at autonomous car, they're looking at 32 different sensors and cameras and lidars and radars and uh, you know maybe with some innovation it might come down <laughs> but 32 is a lot and it's that's where the value is going so these three changes that we talked about one is the electronic meaning hardware and software content and second is all this and then let me tell you the reason for this 15 to 50 percent so 2016 they said 15 percent warranty talking to the oems uh, themselves some of them are telling me it goes up to 50 percent of failures and wow. that when you go to look at the root cause it looks like a hardware failure they call it a mechatronic failure mechanical electronic failure when they go right down to the root cause it's a software failure and the third is, as you mentioned, this move to electric vehicles and autonomous cars. But we can follow that up later. So here are the standards. Number one, something we have known since 2011 is functional safety ISO 26262. Definitely. Going hand in hand with that is a cybersecurity standard, ISO 21434. That is in a change document, change draft two, 
we're on the writing committee of that. We see that coming out end of next year. There's a guidance standard that's come out from SAE called uh, SAE J3061 that people are using. We're already doing training on this. So the cyber, the cybersecurity and functional safety, somebody, some people call it safety and security. I'll just say this. When the car becomes connected, there's a million ways people are trying to uh, are going to try and break into the car. Hackers are so that's a big cybersecurity issue. All right. Next, with the software, there's a growing reliance on automotive spice. In fact, I was doing an automotive spice certification last week in Silicon Valley. And then there's a, a standard called SOTIF, safety of the intended function that goes hand in hand with ISO 26262. Uh, DIRT SOTIF is, you know, when you, um, you know, when things, you think everything is going fine, you've designed it well, but the, 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 the autonomous car or the system design cannot handle misuse by a customer or something abruptly different happening. That's sort of. And then, of course, so ISO 26262, Automotive Spice, Cybersecurity, sort of. And then, of course, that's Agile APQP or Agile at Scale. And, and there's more. But I'll stop there so we don't give too much to our listeners. But just let's make sure we, we focus on, on three standards. I'd like them to take away with them ISO 26262. Cybersecurity and A Spice, and of course, they need to integrate all that into the existing IATF 16949. Sorry for the long answer, Dirk. <laughs> well, I mean, so uh, so it sounds like these standards have come up they've had to adapt so you mentioned cybersecurity and so forth obviously uh, we wouldn't have to be worrying about this if our cars weren't more and more um, connected right um, we if we just had the you know your dad's if you just had your dad's Oldsmobile um, we wouldn't have to be worrying about this um, but have these changes and these standards impacted the way suppliers handle new product development. So I, I understand what, what you're saying in terms of standards required you know, to make sure that your, you know, your car can't be hacked or, or whatnot, um, and a lot of safety requirements. Is this affecting what's happening at the front end even during design? Absolutely. It's impacting you know, suppliers right now as we speak. And uh, I'll just tell you an uh, executive overview I did. And, and this is a major company that does uh, electronics, uh, hardware and software for um, the car automobile industry. And I was making this presentation to the president and uh, somewhere in there, finally I said, ASIL level and, and ASILs, he suddenly, he realized ASILs, automotive safety integrity levels, these are the designation of for functional safety, he said, oh, ASILs mean ISO 26262? I said, yes, ASILs mean ISO 26262. And then two minutes later, he stopped me and said, ASILs mean ISO 26262? I said, yes, ASILs <laughs> means ISO 26262. And then 15 minutes later, he stopped me again. Why I say this story is that this is a level of understanding inside our organizations right now. Things have changed. Top management doesn't know it has changed. In fact, cybersecurity is a, just a word in the RFQ that they've agreed to. And they're just doing exactly what the customer is asking for without doing a threat and risk analysis called a TARA. And uh, they need to do also another penetrative uh, test to make sure that they have analyzed all the different ways that the system can fail. But the long and the short of it, what I'm trying to say is things have changed, but the systems inside these car companies have not changed. And let me list at least a couple of things that need to change. More than this needs to happen. Number one, they need to look inside their organization 
and reorganize it in the new product development as system, hardware, and software. And the reason for that, Dirk, is that these systems, electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles, are a departure from mechanical combustion engines. So the design is quite complicated and you need to take on a systems engineering aspect. So number one, redesign, reorganize in the system, hardware, and software, and they need to train the system engineers in terms of what competencies they need to have, because we don't have that competency right now in North America. Number two, requirements be between the system, the hardware, and the software needs to flow. ISO 26262 requires it, the Cybersecurity Standard 21434 requires it, ASPICE requires it. So we need to have requirements flow down. And, and third, we need to have what is something called engineering V, which is requirements flowing down, testing flowing up. These three changes are dramatic, big changes in the organization. And, and so um, this and more need to be tackled by the top management in these organizations. Well, and, and that, uh, so that's kind of leading us up to, I think, to our next question here. So everything that you've described is what's going on within, you know, the design process and even the manufacturing process within, within the organization itself. Our audience, obviously, is largely quality professionals, and they're working with the quality management system. How does all this affect the company's quality management system, and how does that how does that Im Im impact what the, you know, the, the, the quality management professional within those organizations, how they're having to deal with this? What's the impact of this on them? Excellent. So looking at ISO 26262, there is, so by the way, when we implement this, we are saying don't hire any new people, do it with the existing people in your organization. You know, uh, in fact, the biggest mistake to make in a company that's got a legacy of 15, 20, 50 years is to bring in somebody new, expect them to know your systems, and they themselves may not have the breadth of knowledge to make the changes necessary. So let's just look at functional safety. There are three specialist roles in there. A functional safety manager, a functional safety project manager, and functional safety engineer. So the functional safety engineer in the beginning can be a specialist role, but eventually, and even right in the beginning, we think the existing work needs to be taken over by all the engineers writing requirements and doing the testing without making it a specialist role. But the, who could the functional safety manager be if you want to, in the beginning, it could be a specialist role, but it can be rolled into the quality manager's role. And third, we have what is called, we have project managers today, and then there's a role of the functional safety project manager that could get rolled into the same. So what we would like, you know, if you want to, you can create the silo organization that's going to be doing parallel work to the existing organization for about 10 to 15% of the requirements, which are safety requirements, but that's the wrong way to go. Right, and you're gonna be, you're gonna be talking uh, about some more of this stuff on, on, a, on a webinar that we have coming up uh, next, uh, not next, yeah, next Tuesday, uh, October 1st at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern. It, it's called uh, Safety Products and Electric and autonomous vehicles, uh, safety products and electric and autonomous vehicles. Um, what will you if, you, if you can kind of synopsize for us what you're gonna be covering in that webinar for our, our audience? So what I'll be doing in that webinar is talk about these changes that are taking place in the environment, these new standards, and these fundamental changes taking place. And I'll tell you this, I'll just, you, you know, I, just to actually reemphasize the question you asked and the answer, which I didn't directly answer, is safety, quality engineers are going to have to embrace new roles, like 
assessment and audits and confirmation reviews in functional safety. There will be roles in cybersecurity of the same. There will be the job of doing the HARA and the TARA, or something called safety element out of context. And then, of course, ASPIs, we need to have, you know, uh, quality personnel in, 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 in software dealing with ASPIs. So a big role for quality. And, and I'll do this. I'll add to our webinar and maybe finish with the competencies and roles in, in these new standards for the quality organization. Okay, and, and also, you know, you just said something there that I, I hadn't thought about. Um, you kind of almost mentioned it in passing. Is our quality departments, quality management system uh, uh, departments and the people who are in charge of them, are they going to have to start looking at hiring software professionals into those departments in order just to understand what's going on with the actual software systems? You know, that might be a place we, so we're against, you know, I, you know, as you all know, I came from, I'm very automotive, very, you know, I came from a large OEM and uh, I've spent now years also in semiconductors and hardware and software. And, uh, but I am against headcount. We cannot afford to add headcount in, in when we try to do these things. Of course, we have to spend some money, put these systems in place. But software may be one area. If you don't have quality folks that you can elevate, then quality might be the only area where I could, I could see us needing to hire people. And let me just say this, Dirk, in, in all the different organizations I visit, quality is a stepchild. They are somehow kept outside the loop that's where a lot of the money and the organizations and software are growing dramatically. Companies really need to integrate system, hardware, and especially software into the new product development you know, process and, and give software the importance it needs. Right, as, as you say, as, as, especially as, as the, the importance of software in the product itself is increasing, then obviously within the quality management uh, uh, system, it's going to have to grow accordingly, I would imagine. Derek, there's one thing, absolutely, and I think there's one thing we didn't spend a lot of time on, we'll spend time on the webinar, which is GM and Volkswagen announcing the shift from combustion engines to electric vehicles and really, it's because countries now are saying they will not allow combustion engines to continue. So it's a very different world. It's a complete product shift. And, you know, people should be looking at it strategically for their organizations and also their careers. Okay. Uh, so, and uh, Chad, uh, we're going to be talking about more of this. Uh, obviously, we'll, we'll get more in depth in this on, on the webinar that's coming up. Uh, the webinar that's coming up, and uh, there's a link to the webinar underneath the player page there. Uh, and I recommend that everybody go out and uh, check it out. Uh, Chad Keimel, CTO of Omnix Incorporated, thanks for joining us and uh, giving us a little bit more information on this. Thank you, Dirk. Always a pleasure. All right. So, don't forget to sign up for the webinar Safety Products and Electric and Autonomous Vehicle Standards coming up Tuesday, October 1st at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I will be hosting and Chad here will be presenting, so you don't want to miss out on that. That is it for today. As usual, if there is someone or something you would like to see in the show, just let us know. Send an uh, email to us at qdl at qualitydigest.com. So thanks for joining us today and we will see you next week on QDL. So long.